Yeah, I did all my prep leading up to this, and, and part of that was obviously like messaging everyone, finding out, you know, tell me a little bit about your performance, and you know, what, how can I introduce you? And, do you know the only one that didn't respond to me? <laughs> this one over here. They didn't respond to me. So, from that, I can uh, decipher two things. Number one, Andrew is so abhorrently embarrassed by the content that he is about to unleash to you all that he was like, oh, I'm absolutely not letting that one get out beforehand because Liam ruined it. <laughs> also, someone passed him a dictionary. Number two, he's an amazing prick. <laughs> Come on up, Andrew. Yeah! Uh, hi, everyone. How you doing? Yeah! Um, so I'd like to start this off with an announcement. Uh, the decision has been made for me to start having sex again. Um, the decision wasn't mine. If it was up to me, I'd been at it a while ago. But someone out there was like... That guy, he can finally get lucky. Um, there's, there's, it's not all like great though when you're having sex again. There's one thing I have. There's, there's one thing I have, have noticed, I have discovered, and it's, it's I have it on, I have it like from one reputable source that this also happens to him, but. Uh, this is a thing I think it's, it may be a women's thing, but why, whenever I wake up, why is there just like a tiny bit of duvet covering me? Like, why do you make a mess of the duvet? Is this a thing, like, are there any women here who do that, who make a mess of the duvet? Yeah, sort your shit out, okay? I wake up! And the fucking buttons in the label, the part of the bed reserved solely for the bottom of the duvet, are in my face. It's not on. There's other um, things that happen when you, you know, you, you start having sex again. Um, one, one thing was um, taking an STI test. Yes, that's fine, it's just... The, the actual act of taking an STI test is a lot more difficult than, than you think it will be. So, for those who aren't familiar, prepare yourself, because what I'm about to say is a little gross. You have to do a urine test and a blood test. So you start off with the urine test, because you think that, that's the easiest one, that's the one you find. So you, you know, you, you need to go to the toilet, so you sort of, you rock up and you, you get yourself out ready, and you just sort of, you fill up, and what you realise is this tube fills up a lot faster than you thought it would. So you're left with this tube filled right to the brim, and there's two levels on it. There's two little lines that give like a max and a min. You are way over the max. So, so you're like, okay, I, I can't hand this in, otherwise, you know, that'll mess up the results and they think I've got chlamydia. So you, you have to, like, try and let a bit out into the toilet and this empties as fast as it fills up. So you go and it goes under the fucking other level. So you're left with not enough urine. <laughs> and you've already done everything you can do, so you can't go again. You have to put it to the side, this disgusting tube of urine to the side. And so you move on to the blood test. <laughs> and the blood test, so well, what they do is they, they give you a little sort of prick thing that, like, you know. <laughs> Dead bastards. Um, and you, you prick a, you know, a little hole in your finger so you can, you can put some blood into a separate tube. And so what you do is you, you put it there, ouch, and you start to hold it over the tube. You think this will be fine. And then you realise you've put a, a hole in your finger in a place that is not optimal or conducive to pouring blood into a tube and you find it running down your hand. And that is not ideal at all. And then you finally, you know, they, they give you a, a couple of others, so you, you have another go at it, you prick another hole in your finger, and what you realise with this tube is that 
it does not fill as fast as the urine tube. It takes a long fucking time and you have to squeeze your finger. It is fucking painful and I'm, I'm not the strongest guy so I'm already feeling a little faint after this, after squeezing my finger and losing a fair bit of blood. But then once you're done, you can go back to the urine. So, so you get back to the toilet, because you can go again, and this time you've learned your lessons. So what you do is you pinch, and you gradually let out a little bit, and you're watching it each time, every time you get it up to you, you're like, is that, is that close enough? Is that enough? <laughs> so that's taking an STI test. You know, it's, it's, it's certainly, it's a, it's a fun, like, sort of learning experience, you know. Um, there are other issues. When you have a, a flatmate and not so thick walls, you know, a ball gag becomes less of a kink and more a practicality after a bit. <laughs> Living with a flatmate is, it's kind of fun. You do get to, you know, you, you see how the other lives, you know. My flatmate has, you know, I'm really into football, so he gets to enjoy me, you know, cheering when my team score and crying when the other team normally score. And then I also get to enjoy because my flatmate really likes architecture. And <laughs> um, one thing he's, he's set up in our living room is just this little sort of like paper model of this, this building. It's, it's this very modernist, ugly ass fucking building. And you look at it and you realise, oh, this, the, guy, the guy who designed this, he's this, he's this Dutch guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dutch guy. And his, his, entire, um, his entire prerequisite for being able to design a building was, I looked it up, was designing a very uncomfortable looking chair. That was, this, this chair looks so fucking hard. And then he's left being designing a building. This is, this is why Brexit happened, because of Dutch architecture. Um, that is my position and I stand by it. There is, um, you know, there's other fun intricacies when living with a flatmate. I've got a pull-up bar recently. Yeah. yeah. And I can do a whole one and a half pull-ups. My flatmate can do several. I go to the gym every fucking weekday and he's not been in months. And he can do several. It's not fair. It's not fair. Now that wasn't necessary. No, but I, I, I really sort of um, got into a working out for a bit. A large part was because I was going on a, a holiday to Bulgaria. And I wanted to, to get fit. Some of those people cheering also went to Bulgaria. They don't remember most of it. But there, there are some fun intricacies with uh, Bulgaria. Um, I'm saying intricacies a lot, aren't I? That's a weird word. Um, so yeah, I know there was like one time when we were out and you know this rep comes up and he's he's, he's a very handsome guy and all the girls are all over him and I wasn't jealous but like he's trying to get us to go. He's trying to get us to go to this this one club, and he's like, yeah, it's like it's like 30 left to get in. So I'm saying to my friends, okay, I'm trying to organise this, okay? Because you know we get you get at this bar, you get like free drinks the whole night, and it's, that covers it. So you know we're British, we'll take that. And so I'm trying to organise with my friends. I'm like, okay, it's 30 left each for all of us, and one of my friends is just like, okay, I'll put 20 left towards it. No, 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 no. You have to pay 30 each. Okay, here's 20 left towards it. And we actually go to this bar and, you know, it was shit. <laughs> the music was awful and they had like a one drink order limit. And like, like I said, we're British. We're, uh, we're thinking, oh great, we'll go to the bar and we'll get like loads of fucking drinks all at once. And we'll be down with them. No, only one. And you know what? The guy, the rep who, who got us there, he was Dutch as well. <laughs> And that is my bit. Thank you very much, guys. Have a nice evening.